the evidence backs evolution. So it's quite simple that that should be what's taught in public school science classes. And again, this is not an attack on religion because there's plenty of places for religion, from churches to at home and even in public schools where you talk about it in the appropriate setting. Talk about the history of religion, talk about comparing different religions from all around the world in a balanced way in a comparative religious class. That's where religion belongs. But it's just, it's not science. It says nothing, it, it's not meant to speak about the mechanisms that make that, the way we understand the mechanisms of the natural world, it's meant to speak about other things. It's a different sphere. And so, again, the Louisiana Science Education Act is a creationist law. And I mentioned Governor Jindal. He, he explained exactly what the purpose of this law is for. He said, we have what's called the Science Education Act that says if a teacher wants to supplement these materials, if the school board's okay with that, if the state school board's okay with that, they can supplement these materials. I've got no problem if school board, a local school board says, we want to teach our kids creationism. Some people have these beliefs as well. Let's teach them intelligent design. Then he asked, what are we afraid of? And what I'm afraid of is we're going to confuse students about the nature of science and religion, where science belongs, where religion belongs, and how they intersect. And we're going to confuse students about the scientific method. And it doesn't just, if you undermine students' understanding of biology, they're not going to be able to go into any biology field later in life. They're also going to struggle with all their other scientific fields. Because if you get taught the scientific method doesn't apply in biology, does it apply in chemistry? Does it apply in any other science class? Does it apply in physics? Is gravity only a theory too? <laughs> and so that, that's really, that's sort of the core threat to teaching this. Is it's not just an attack on evolution, which is bad enough, but it's an attack on all of science to teach creationism in a public school science class. And we, can, we, we know this law is being used. Around the country, there's already roughly 13% of teachers openly teach creationism in public schools, whether they're in Louisiana or elsewhere, where they don't have a law to protect them. And another 60% either teach both sides or don't teach evolution at all, because they're either afraid of the backlash they may face for teaching science, or they don't know the science well enough to teach their students. So it's a real problem, and this law only protects teachers who would do the wrong thing and not teach real science in their classes. And so this is enough about Louisiana, though. We get made fun of all the time. I grew up, it, I grew up here, and I would leave state with my family every year. And I get made, I would go to Connecticut, and I get made fun of every year when I go up there because everyone say you're from Louisiana, you're stupid. And so as like a 10, 11, 12 year old kid, I, I would start explaining. I'd say I'm Zach, I'm from Louisiana, but I'm not stupid. And it's how I introduce myself to all these other kids from around the country. But so, but it's really it's not just our problem. There's creationism bills introduced all across the country, not just in the South, not just in Louisiana, but as far north as I've seen bills in New Hampshire, in Montana, in Colorado, in Florida, all around the country. It's not just our problem. And we, in Texas, where I'm living right now, we not, it just came out recently that the largest charter program in the state of Texas is teaching creationism, where it's teaching, it's teaching gems like the fossil record is sketchy, and leading scientists doubt the age of the earth. Um, and also their history materials so far. I'm, a, I'm actually a history major, so that hit me a little, the hardest, I think, where they explain that the uh, cause of Japan's involvement in World War II is that the samurai were expansionist. Now the problem is the samurai were disbanded about 1876, I think, which is a little bit before World War II. That there's a wide variety of faiths who support the teaching of evolution my favorite quote is one from Pope, Pope John Paul, which is, there is no conflict between evolution and the doctrine of faith. It's a great quote to use if anyone thinks there's conflict. You say, well, if you are one of the world's largest religions, there's no conflict. Many mainline Protestants agree there's no conflict. Many other people, many faiths, agree there's no conflict between evolution and their faith. So that's a, that's a point I think while I'm here at Centenary, it's a very important to hit and help get that message out. And in the repeal of the Louisiana Science Education Act, we actually have roughly 14,000 clergy members on board from the Clergy Letter Project, which is an organization that has clergy members affirm their support for teaching evolution in public schools and their support for evolution. So when I was in high school, I knew we had this law passed my sophomore year of high school, the summer before that. And I really, I could never believe it passed. And I, I was waiting and waiting for an adult to come take on this law and fight back against it. And I waited a year, I was a junior, and no one did it. And I waited another year, and it was before I was a senior in high school, and I realized no adult seems to care about this. No one really seemed to care about it as much as I did. 
And so I thought I had to stand up and really lead a repeal at that point because it was my last chance that I knew I'd be in the state. I knew I'd be a student who, while I wasn't being taught tradition myself, this law did affect, this law like, sort of played a role in my education. And so I decided to launch a repeal. And the first step at that point is to find a legislative sponsor. And it was, I, it was I had an uphill battle, but it was also, it was sort of fairly easy to figure out who to ask because in the entire Louisiana legislature, only three people voted against this law. So I knew, <laughs> so well, we, we had very much an uphill battle to get this repealed, which is why we haven't succeeded yet. But I sort of knew who to go to to start. And one of those people was Senator Karen Carter-Peterson, a legislator from New Orleans. And so I got a meeting with her, I emailed her, and I was sitting in the room and I started explaining, I'd already started getting Nobel laureates on board to repeal, getting science organizations, and started explaining what this law was, and who we had backing us at this point, and she cut me off. And she just said, you don't have to explain it, when do we get started? And so that, that was step one. And we went in that first year into the Senate Education Committee, and we lost five to one. And it was, it was really unfortunate because we had a state senator who's now no longer there, thankfully, Senator Julie Quinn, who explained she really was tired of hearing from people with little letters behind their names. And she, she described, at that point, we had about 45 Nobel laureates on board. We had the largest science organizations in the world, the largest biology organizations in the world, the National Science Teachers Association on board. It's all the people you want to listen to about science and science education policy. <laughs> but, uh, but apparently, apparently not if you're a Louisiana legislator. <laughs> so that was year one. We lost five to one. Then. And so we came in the second year, and we improved. We still only got one vote, but we only had two votes against us this time. Three legislators who had shown up the year before to vote against us were not willing to show up and vote against science. While they were brave enough to stand with us, they weren't ready to vote against us. And so we made small progress there, but we had a new legislative celebrity. Um, the year before was Senator Quinn with little letters. And this year um, it was Senator Walsworth, or last year was Senator Walsworth, who I think he represents an area somewhere nearby here, I think in Monroe. And, uh, and he explained that uh, he, didn't, he didn't like evolution because he, he there, there's this great experiment, uh, if you all have time, if you haven't heard of it, go look up Richard Lenski. He's done an amazing experiment over the last, it's been 25 years now, where he's been letting E. coli breed and then freezing different samples as they've mutated and seen how they change over time. And so we had a science teacher explain this experiment to Senator Walsworth, and he cut her off and said, well, does that ever turn to a person? And it's, 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 it, it, it just illustrates, like, this is what happens when you don't teach evolution. Evolution says nothing about E. coli turning into people. It's just it's, 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 sort of, it's a very it's a simple, nice concept about how things will change and adapt to their surroundings and how, how we have the diversity of life on Earth. But, but that doesn't mean that E. coli necessarily have to turn to people in 25 years. It's a long process. And so, so that, was, that was year two, and we lost two to one that year. And this last year, we came back again, and we lost again. And this year, we lost three to two, and our new legislator of the year was uh, Senator Albert Guillory. And this one, this one also just illustrates something about these kind of laws, where again, we like critical thinking, we like our students to see all sides of theories, but in science, there's only one side of the theory, it's what the evidence says. And you, you teach what the evidence says, you back reality. So, and, and, and the other thing is, when you open a law like this that allows pretty much anything to science classes under the justification of critical thinking, because if you're teaching creationism, you could just as easily slip astrology or alchemy or anything like that into a science class, because it's just as, it's just as scientifically reasonable. Not to say anything about the, whether it's a religious belief, but it's just, you don't, it's not science. And so, so but Senator Guillory illustrated another belief you could slip into science class that wasn't creationism, that he was in support of. He explained, uh, he had this experience in a foreign country, and this man, he, he went to a doctor, and this man was semi-clothed, uh, he wore no shoes, and um, he was in a dusty spot, and he had some bones that he threw around. And, and uh, this man told Senator Guillory about his history and about certain things with his health. health um, and I don't know what he told Senator Guillory, but he told him things. And Senator Guillory really wouldn't want to keep this man's science out of a science classroom in Louisiana. And so that's why he supported the Louisiana Science Education Act. And it was one of those things where it's like, I hope the people who want the Louisiana Science Education Act 
for creationism, listen to that, because I can't imagine they want witch doctors in science class. I just can't imagine, even if they want creationism. So really, it's what happens. You, we don't want witch doctors, we don't want creationism, we don't want astrology, we just want science in science class. And that, that's the lesson I've taken from the Louisiana legislature. So we're going to be back there again this spring. We're going to try again. And maybe I'm very hopeful now that there is a court case in Louisiana right now about uh, a child being taught creationism and his family isn't very, wasn't very happy about that. Um, the teacher apparently uh, called, you know, he was Buddhist and they called his belief, they said evolution was a stupid theory for stupid people and if you're Buddhist and don't believe in creationism, you are stupid. And so I, I hope this case may spark some of the Louisiana legislators to reconsider saying that they support of this law once they see what's actually happening in the state. But again, this isn't just a Louisiana problem. So another place we see creationism is school vouchers. And these are programs where they give private religious schools tons of money to educate public school students. And it's, I mean, I appreciate innovation in education. I appreciate choice. But the whole point about private schools is private. It's not, you can teach whatever you want, but you're not subject to public accountability. So the moment you start taking public money, we all have, as citizens have a right to know where that money goes, know how it's spent, and know that it's used for things that are legal for public money to be used as. And that's not teaching creationism. And so we've got hundreds of schools around the country that are getting roughly, at least probably about $100 million that we've documented to schools that are teaching creationism. And our, our private schools are getting public money. And so this is, I just, this, we, we always take the flack here. And we took a lot of flack for the school vouchers in Louisiana. We made international headlines because one type of school is using curriculum that said the Loch Ness Monster is real and disproves evolution. <laughs> that, and so it's absurd, but that's actually not just being used in Louisiana. We got made fun of. It's being used all across the country. And it, it's always, this is one thing I just want to keep saying. We, we can be the, we can really change the message here. We can, if we overturn the Louisiana Science Education Act, if we fight back against the vouchers, we can prove we're not the stupid state. We, we really, <laughs> I mean, if, if we're suddenly the ones overturning all the creationism and other states, Oklahoma has creationism bills, New Hampshire has creationism bills, Texas keeps on with its, just, I mean, I don't, where do you start with Texas? <laughs> uh, as an aside, I've lived in Texas now, or I've been living in Texas for about three years now, and it makes you realize how unique Louisiana is. Because they all really think they're special. But they're not really. They, they're not that unique. And it's just, it's sort of funny. But, so what, that's what I want to do. So I want to see a repeal of the Louisiana Science Education Act, and I want to see a removal of all these school vouchers in Louisiana, and I want to see a set the trend for the nation for pro-science. And so that, that's half of what I think is very, very important when it comes to science. And uh, we get off, we've talked about religion a lot, but there's, I, I want to be on pure science right now. And there's one more problem Louisiana and the nation face when it comes to science, and it's also funding. And we, for many of you who are probably science students, we just cut about $80 billion from public research and development over the next decade, which means that if you want a research grant, the average age was already high. It was about 35 before you got your first research grant. Now it's risen another decade. Mm. And about 20% of American scientists, I think it was, are now considering leaving the country to look for grants in other countries because the funding climate is just far better. So along with not teaching our kids science in America, we're also really just undermining, even if we teach them science, they're not gonna have jobs, they're not gonna have the ability to research when they come out of, of high school, of college. And that, that's, just as, that's just as devastating to me as not teaching evolution, as not teaching science, right? And, and so that, that's one more place where it's, you can still, you can call your friends, you can tell them to call their congressman, you can call your congressman and tell them fun science. And, and honestly, bring it to, what's, Let's let's have what why doesn't why don't Mary Landrew and David Vitter have a bill that brings in money for science research, build a new research center, hire Louisiana kids to do biomedical research? Like we have the Pennington Center in Baton Rouge. Why don't we have more of those? It it, it seems like something that would be great, and and I think I mean I think everyone in this room should send a letter to their House and Senate co or U.S. Congressmen and demand they fund science because. That, that's, that's sort of the national, that's where you can make a difference on the national level. On um, state level, it's with the creationism, 
on a national level, call your congressman. And and I really 